Hello there, my name is Gary Sims from Android Authority. Now, if you want to get into programming or you want to encourage a young person to get into programming, then maybe the micro bit is a good entry point. So what is it and how does it work? Well, let's find out. First of all, a bit of history. During the late 1980s and the early 1990s, there was a thing called the Home Micro Revolution, where computers like the Commodore 64, the Sinclair ZX Spectrum, and of course the uh, BBC Micro found their ways into the homes of lots of young people who got into things like gaming and, and things like that, but it also gave them an entry point into understanding computing in general. And many, many people from that point, including myself, went on to career in computing as software engineers or as other type of IT related jobs and actually that did actually spur on a whole growth at university level of entrance people coming in to study computer science related courses at university however once we got into the PC era then and the games console era with things like the PlayStation then that kind of uh, drive to get into uh, IT kind of dropped down. And in fact, lots of the universities saw that the number of requests for people to join computer science courses actually went down significantly. And there have been a couple of attempts to boost up that interest again amongst young people to get into computing. One, of course, is the Raspberry Pi, and the other is the Microbit. Now, earlier on, I mentioned the BBC Micro, and this is actually called the BBC Micro Bit, and that's completely intentional because this is sponsored by the uh, British Broadcasting Corporation, who have worked with ARM and with several other partners to bring this uh, device to a whole generation of young people. In fact, it's been given away free to a whole year group uh, in the UK, across the whole UK for free so that the teachers and in the classroom they can learn about programming using one of these. But of course, they're also for sale. You can buy one, you can use it yourself, you can gift it to somebody, and it's a great entry point into getting into programming because it's small, it's easy to use, it doesn't take much to start getting some lights flashing to write your first programs. So let's have a deeper look. So what is the microbit? Well, basically it's a very small board that's got at its heart an ARM microcontroller, the Cortex-M0. And it's also got a 25 LEDs that act as a kind of a rudimentary display, which you can scroll words and messages across. It's got accelerometer, so it can detect tilting and movement. It's got a compass and it's got Bluetooth and it's got two buttons so that you can interact with the users. Now you don't need a television to use this, you don't need a monitor, you don't need a keyboard, you don't need a mouse. You just need to be able to have a PC that you can program it on. And then once you've programmed it, the program stays in flash memory and it can be put into any kind of project from simple kind of, you know, badges all the way up to complicated robot systems powered by a simple battery setup. And once it's flashed, it runs in there all the time. So the programming is done on a PC and then you flash it over and you run the program. Every time it starts up, it runs the same program. So it's really easy to get into programming it. So how do you program it? Well, basically there are four different programming environments available. Probably the easiest for the youngest people is a blocks system. That there are two IDEs that uh, ARM have partnered with different people, including Microsoft, to provide these kind of blocks. And the blocks, you can drag them out from a collection of blocks and they do things like set variables, do a loop, test a condition, and it's all built inside. It's very visual for, for people to be able to see how these programs are put together. Now behind the block system is JavaScript. Of course, JavaScript is very, very popular on the web. And those blocks are converted directly into JavaScript. In fact, inside some of the editors, like the Microsoft editor, you can switch between the block view and the JavaScript view, and you can see what the blocks are doing in JavaScript, which is a great way to learn the fundamentals of JavaScript. And if you want to then switch over to JavaScript, if you write a fairly simple program, it can actually be converted back into blocks. If you start writing more complicated programming, the block system just is left behind but you can just keep on writing some very complicated JavaScript there. Now the only downside of the JavaScript system is that because there are two separate IDEs, what the calls that you use to do things like control the LEDs or interrogate the accelerometer or see if there's been a button press, they're actually different on both uh, systems. So there's not a standard JavaScript API that would mean you can write it in one environment and the other. Once you pick an environment, you need to stay in that environment. 
Now, besides blocks and JavaScript, you can also write programs for the micro bit using MicroPython. Now, Python, again, is a very, very popular programming language. It's got a whole bunch of uses out there. And MicroPython is kind of a subset that's designed to run on microcontrollers. And like the other environments, you write the program on a PC and then you flash it over onto the micro bit and your Python program is then running. And the final way that you can write programs for the microbit is using C and C++. And that's because the microbit actually uses ARM's embed system. Now, ARM's embed OS is basically their way of providing an operating system and all the tools you need to build products based on microcontrollers, based on ARM's microcontrollers. And basically, it's all open source. So you can basically get hold of all of this code, all of these libraries, and all the compilers and tools that you need to build an Internet of Things product or a microcontroller product, of which uh, the uh, microbit is one of them. And that basically means if you go over to the embed development environment, you can add a microbit board and then you can start writing C code. And that C code will then just get flashed onto the controller and it will start running. So that means you've got blocks, you've got JavaScript, you've got MicroPython, you've got C and you've got C++, a really great way to get into programming from all different levels of experience. Now to test out the micro bit, what I've done is I wrote a program that simulates an electronic dice. You shake the micro bit and it comes up on the display with a number between one and six. And I've written that using blocks, using JavaScript, using MicroPython and using C. Now if you go over to androidauthority.com website, you'll see all four programs there and how I did them. Basically the blocks is the easiest, so really it is a good way to get into programming. The MicroPython and the JavaScript are, I reckon, around the same level of difficulty. And the C one is a bit more complicated because you really are dealing with some low-level events, some low-level reading of the accelerometer, which is a bit more complicated than what you get in the, uh, the higher-level languages. But on all four platforms, it's very easy to write programs, and it was easy to take that idea and port it across all four environments. So it really is a good way to learn about these different setups. And so there you have it, my review of the BBC Microbit. Of course, it's made in conjunction with the BBC, in conjunction with ARM, and with a whole host of partners. Now, of course, there are other alternatives like the Raspberry Pi and the Raspberry Pi Zero. However, this really is almost foolproof and does offer a great way to get into programming. It also makes a great gift around the holiday time or around someone's birthday to get them into programming. So I really do wholeheartedly recommend it. My own children are really quite keen to start playing with this now that the review is finished. Well, my name is Gary Sims from Android Authority. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe to Android Authority's YouTube channel. Please do download the Android Authority app because that will give you access to all of our news and features directly on your mobile phone. And last but not least, don't forget to go over to androidauthority.com because we are your source for all things Android. One final thing, if my voice sounds a bit croaky, it's because unfortunately I've caught a cold, so sorry about that.